myself and ask questions that way too. But they'll be sharing links um, to other helpful things there as well. Hi, Lakeisha. I think people from around the school too. So when you're thinking about Santa Fe College, we kind of start with the idea of why college, right? At this point in life, so maybe you're thinking about uh, clubs and organizations, getting involved, maybe you're looking at studying abroad or you just want to become a leader. Who knows what is motivating you? There's all kinds of reasons and your peers will have all kinds of reasons for considering college at this point too. Um, feel free again to share in the chat box if you've got any reasons why you're thinking about coming to college. Uh, here at Santa Fe, we were voted number one community college in the U.S., and um, we've maintained the same stats that got us there in the beginning. Um, we talk about having just the right class sites. We're not like those bigger state schools where you're going to have uh, 400 people in one class. Our classes top out around 40 students. Most of them have somewhere between 12 and 20. It's a lot smaller on our campus. You're getting that one-on-one -on -one attention and interaction you might need. Um, our campus does consist of 22,000 students at Santa Fe College. We have seven physical locations, um, see here, kind of spread out around our region. Some uh, Northwest campus is where most of our administrative functions are, um, but there's uh, campuses out in Archer and Stark that um, offer lots of the same classes as on the Northwest campus. And then we have um, things like the Kirkpatrick campus where we have our Institute for Public Safety so that's where we train the police officers and the EMT. So th there's a little bit more focus on that particular campus. So you have lots of options for where to take your classes. If you're thinking about transferring to UF or maybe taking classes at UF at the same time, we have the Blount Center over here, which is right next to UF campus, which might be a great place to take classes if you kind of want to shuttle back and forth a little bit. But you'll figure that out along the way once you speak with your advisor. Um, cool things that Santa Fe has to offer that most schools don't. We have a planetarium and a zoo on campus, so you can learn about the stars and the animals, and we'll have a little guest later today. Um, our application is free, and I encourage you to keep that in mind when you're looking at your options. We have students from around the world. We have uh, 49 states represented on campus, and we have, uh, you know, all these different countries represented as well. It's a very um, international experience. If you're interested in that, there's lots of opportunities to get involved. There's students on this call right now, which will have um, our students introduce yourselves at the end of this, so that you can see they're from all around the world too. When you're thinking about the academics and what your options are and what your path may be, we have lots of degree and non-degree paths. You might be looking at getting your bachelor's, which is your typical four-year degree when you're thinking about um, what your bachelor's is. Then you have your AA and AS, which are your um, generally, your AA is your transfer degree and your AS is your straight to the workforce degree. So these usually take two to three years to complete. And then we have certificate programs. And these certificate programs uh, take anywhere from six months to two years and you're uh, ready to add on to what you've already been studying or this can be straight to the workforce as well. For instance, our police officers, that's a six month certificate program, but it's a very intense six month program. So, we talked a little bit about the certificates there. So you can see some of the certificates we offer. You know, we have our police officers, we have EMT training, we have HVAC if you're interested in something hands-on like that. We have lots of health sciences programs. I'm not going to go in depth with that. We have Lakeisha on who's going to talk a lot more in depth about that today. And then we have construction programs with all sorts of things there. We have our, our dental hygiene program. We have lots of opportunities for certificates if that's what you're interested in. And then we have our associates in science. These are the things, again, that take two to three years to complete. Now, with the associate in science, these are things going straight for the workforce, like our zoo tech program. We're going to see, um, speak with someone from our zoo a little bit later this uh, afternoon, too. But when you're thinking of the zoo tech, that's a job where you study here on campus. Uh, you are prepared to be a zoo technician at the end of your two-year program, and you're ready to go straight into the workforce. So you're going to Zoo Atlanta or Zoo Jacksonville. You're not going to go take your degree and transfer those credits for bachelor's necessarily. It, um, it's, a, it's a little more footwork to get it to be transferred. If you're thinking about doing uh, a transfer degree, you might consider your associates in arts. These are the degrees that transfer well. So these are generally humanities. If you're thinking about your engineering or your language or business, there's are things there. But also keep in mind that we have a lot of these bachelor's degrees here on campus these days. We have um, 
things that are able to offer for our community because these jobs are available in our community. So we offer bachelors and things like accounting or nursing, health services administration, different things like that, early childhood education. So again, lots of opportunities. And uh, these bachelors have entry level and advanced courses available here. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to, um, Amalia or Beyonce, you guys feel free to add those questions in, in the chat box or answer anytime. We're happy to take a break and, and explain things more in depth. So if you're coming to Santa Fe, we do have those four-year programs, but we have a large percentage of our population is coming here with the idea of doing two years here and doing two years somewhere else, and we understand that. Um, and a lot of the people coming to Santa Fe are looking at going to UF, and we understand and support that. When you're thinking of Santa Fe, um, keep in mind that more students transfer from Santa Fe College to UF than any other college in the state or the nation or anywhere in the world. So our average UF transfer acceptance rate is 69%. Our um, honors students, which if you're interested in our honors program, I encourage you to look a little more into that. That means you're taking 15 credit hours or five classes in the honors program. And those honors classes um, are not, it's not necessarily like high school where honors is sometimes harder. Um, these are just kind of more in depth. One, um, one instance of that is one of our folks was talking about taking a psychology class in the honors program that they have to do extra labs where they're able to do a, like a hypnotism lab outside of class in addition. Um, it, it's just a little more in depth, a little more opportunities. So if you're in the honors program, our honors students are accepted at a rate of 88%. So it's a great way to get to UF. Santa Fe is a great path. But if you're not interested in UF, but you are interested in continuing on your bachelor's, um, you can take your AA to a number of schools, but we encourage you to keep in mind that UWF, FMU, UNF, and USF, we all have automatic acceptance agreements, which means if you're looking at earning your AA here at Santa Fe and you speak with uh, your advisor within your first 30 credit hours, um, they can get you set up to be ready to go straight on a direct path with guaranteed acceptance into one of these schools. So. Keep that in mind, again, you have lots of transfer items. Maybe you're interested in being closer to home or further from home, whatever your heart desires. And then I want to take a minute um, to talk about your advisor because a lot of things coming to college, this is kind of a new concept. Um, when you're thinking about your college advisor, so you, with Santa Fe, you apply to Santa Fe College and you submit your application and you submit your transcripts and your transcripts are kind of your high school records to let us know what classes you've already taken and what are complete. And, it helps us decide what classes you need to go into from there to start off. Um, so for instance, what math you need, or if you already have college credit, sometimes from your AP classes, or your um, tested out things, that all comes together in your transcripts and gives us that information. Your advisor reviews those transcripts. Once you've applied and submitted them, you're assigned an advisor. Um, your advisor can give you some advice on what classes to take, but your advisor um, is also a big wealth of knowledge of the college campus. And I encourage you to get to know your advisor and look for opportunities to um, interact and make it that a two-way relationship. Um, check in with your advisor, let them know where you are and ask them to check and make sure you're on track. Um, it's a great opportunity and it's something that um, not everyone takes advantage of. And I, I think it makes it a lot easier to kind of keep on track in the process if you know where you are. Um, one of the things you might look at um, a little bit later is we'll look at a degree audit. So when you decide what your major is, you have this list of classes that you have to take and there's a lot of different options and your advisor can kind of help you get through the weeds on that and get down to the, get down to business. So I encourage you to look at that and let them help you put the pieces together. Um, when you're looking at Santa Fe College, um, when you first enroll, you enroll as a non-Florida resident at full price tuition, which is 382 per credit hour. And we talk about um, being a full-time student, meaning you're taking 12 credit hours, being $4,594. Um, the 12 credit hours, you can take more or you could take less and be at Santa Fe if you want to take more to try and get in as much as you can. And maybe you want to graduate a little class quicker or have your things together that way. Um, you're welcome to. Um, if you think you want to do less because you're trying to manage some other things, maybe you're working at the same time, you can do that as well. But the 12 credit hours is both of a full time, which is important often for your financial aid. So if you're looking at financial aid, keep in mind that, that having 12 credit hours makes you a full time student and eligible for more financial aid. So keep that in mind. Um, and if 
your Florida resident, which if you're in Dixie County High School and you've lived in Florida for 12 consecutive months before you enroll at Santa Fe College, that means you are a Florida resident. And that discounted tuition rate is 106.77 per credit hour, which means all of a sudden your 12 credit hours are bumped down to 12.81 per semester. So it's a really good deal. And this is the, when you're looking, you can compare that to other schools and you'll see that um, that's a really great rate for the same classes you would take elsewhere. And when you're thinking about financial aid and your tuition, um, keep in mind there's lots of opportunities for financial aid at Santa Fe College. Um, I encourage you to fill out your FAFSA in October of your senior year. I'm not sure, Beyonce, if you're a senior or junior or for others here listening, but you'll want to keep in mind the, um, the, the sooner you fill out the FAFSA, the better. Um, it gets you eligible for financial aid through some of your grants and things like that, but also um, some of the scholarships use it to determine whether or not you're eligible for those scholarships. So the sooner you get it in, the sooner you can keep moving forward with your other paperwork and get your finances in order. Um, I encourage you to sub, um, submit your application to Santa Fe College, give it two days for it to kind of get in the system and settle, and then I encourage you to right away fill out the application for the foundation scholarship. The Santa Fe College Foundation has probably $1.6 million, I believe, that's um, sitting waiting to be given out. And it is given out on a first come, first serve basis. They begin reviewing in April and they do different review dates between April and the middle of June. So um, there's lots of opportunities to be considered. Um, when you're applying for the Santa Fe College Foundation, keep in mind it's three questions. And they are all looking at a two to three sentence response. And for those three questions and those short responses, you're automatically applied to every scholarship at Santa Fe College. And the ones that you match with, they'll um, pair you up. So you don't have to do all the digging. It's a pretty simple application process. And I encourage you to look into that. Um, oftentimes, it's this money, um, if we don't have enough applicants, it just doesn't get given out. And we have different pots for people in different areas of the state. So you being in Dixie County, there's a pot that will be there specifically for students in your region. So I encourage you to keep that in mind and, and be brave. I also encourage you to look for financial aid opportunities in your home community. I, um, things to look at are foundation or scholarship. So you might look up Dixie County uh, Foundation, Dixie County Scholarship. You might look up the name of the city or cities in your area even. It doesn't have to be necessarily your city. It can be things nearby. Um, look at things like your left-handed scholarship or your um, I Love Cat scholarships. I encourage you to apply for as much financial aid as possible because the more financial aid you apply for, the more opportunity that you're going to have to um, do more with your education. So I, you're not, the, if you have more financial aid than you need, that comes back to you in a disbursements check once your tuition is taken out of it. And you can use that for books or you can use that for paper, pen, notebooks, computers, sneakers, whatever you need to function. So keep in mind that that financial aid is really valuable. If you're considering coming to Santa Fe College, we also um, mentioned the Santa Fe Southern Scholarship Foundation because we have, um, we don't have housing on campus. I know some of um, the students had asked that in our call earlier. Um, and while we don't have the um, housing on campus, we do have a nice relationship with the Southern Scholarship Foundation where you can apply to do rent-free housing there. Um, they're currently closed for their fall applications, but they'll open back up to accept applications for the spring semester. And if you're looking at coming the fall years, that's something else to keep in mind. But that's rent-free housing, you're only paying for your um, food and utilities. So there's opportunities like that around town. We are, uh, Santa Fe is uh, here in town with UF. We have lots of apartments and rental opportunities and things like that. I encourage you to keep that in mind. Um, you know, beyond just your classes, Santa Fe College has a really active student life. And I um, encourage you to poke around on our student life page, look at our social media, see what's going on in campus. It's a lively campus. Um, we have study abroads. We have lots of opportunities to give back to the community, like boo at the zoo. Um, we have our ambassadors who are joining us here today as opportunities to get involved if you're looking a little bit more beyond the classroom, lots of clubs. We have, um, this is Bo, we have therapy dogs come um, on Tuesdays to kind of help you decompress a little on an opportunity. And, you know, we have lots of athletics on campus and we have lots and lots of clubs. Um, 
might uh, we'll refer back to our students in a minute the little information on that. So um, because a lot of students in high school have never seen a degree audit, um, this is kind of a simplified audit for you. If you're looking at getting your general studies um, associate of arts degree, it kind of shows you the classes that you would need over here with your communications and mathematics, natural sciences, but then there's all these other categories and those break down to like, which ones do you need beyond that, which is where your advisor comes in really handy and helping you figure out how you get all these things. And once you get all these 60 credit hours together, that's how you get your AA degree. So we do kind of um, share that for that. Any questions at this point, guys? Okay. I don't have any, thank you. Thank you. So when you're thinking about um, coming to college at Santa Fe or wherever you choose, because we really want you to have the right journey for you. Um, all of us here are particularly fans of Santa Fe, but I know there's lots of different things to keep in mind. But other things you'll keep in mind are things like entertainment or, um, you know, you might need a laptop or a phone or food. At Santa Fe College, um, there are opportunities to work in our learning commons and to work um, other areas on campus, there's other computer labs and things so that may or may not be something you need. Um, Wi-Fi, there's just a lot of expenses, you know, you're going to have to buy your own toiletries when you're looking at coming to college away from home. So just keep those things in mind. Um, we're sharing this uh, here as an example of a college schedule that one of our ambassadors shared with us last semester, just kind of what they have going on, you know, they have their classes, then they have their lunchtime and break and they study, and then they also have more classes and then they have gym time and they build in library and homework studying time. A lot of your time studying isn't inside the classroom. You do a good bit in the classroom and you do a good bit outside and I think that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at college. Um, a lot of um, folks do choose to work and that's something you'll have to keep in mind with your schedules. How do you want to do that? What does that look like for you? Are you looking at working on the weekends or during the week around classes and are, are you going to wait and work for the summers or do you have enough financial aid and funds to get yourself through without working? Those are things to keep in mind. There are opportunities when you're thinking about financial aid too, I encourage you to think about um, uh, a work study is another opportunity you can keep in mind where you could do some sort of job on campus as well uh, and that counts as grants or aids. All right. We have a little quiz. Um, do you guys want to take a quiz or would you rather talk to students for a minute? If someone has to say, I want to take a quiz, if we're going to do the quiz. I don't hear that. So I'm going to have some students chime in for a minute. So we're going to go here. I'm going to see, um, would oh, Madison Cook, would you uh, come on with us for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Maddie. Could you talk a little bit about this housing search and uh, share just a little bit about that with our students and listening? Yeah. So what I highly recommend, since like once you decide where you are going, to find where you're going to live then. I signed my lease in January before I moved to Gainesville, and it just gives you more options of places. Um, also, listen to reviews always, always read the reviews. Highly recommend that. And just keep an open mind. And if you know anyone that lived in Gainesville, they will really help you find where the best places are to live and like the easiest places or where the buses go to. So just really look into the reviews and the prices. I recommend. Thanks, Maddie. Um, I think maybe Andre, do you want to come on for a minute? We'll switch out our students here. Yes, hi. Hi, Andre. Could you talk to us a little bit about the Learning Commons? Okay, so the Learning Commons is uh, in the library and you can go there to get help or if you just need to study, it's a great place to go. They have uh, three, uh, three levels, you can say, where um, you have uh, the STEM uh, Learning Commons and the study rooms. And then on the second floor, you have the writing and language tutoring, which is also super useful. And there's a, uh, as higher you go, the quiet, quieter the place goes. Uh, and then on the third floor, it's like absolute quiet. And if you really like that, you can study there. But in general, the learning commons is somewhere I go personally almost every day when I go to school. 
it's just a great place to study and a great place to get help. And even if you don't need help, for example, I'm from Sweden and uh, English is my second language. So sometimes I just make sure that the tutors help me uh, oversee my grammar and how I'm writing everything and if it's correct or just to get their input to have a second pair of eyes on them. And uh, I really like the learning skills. And how much do you pay for the tutoring at the Learning Commons? Oh, yes. <laughs> so what is very shocking to me coming from Sweden, where education is really good, and then coming to Santa Fe, where you can get free tutoring. Uh, so you pay zero dollars for a tutor to just look over and help you. Uh, it's amazing. So it's completely free. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it surprises me, too. Thanks, Audrey. Thank you. Um, and now we're going to transition for a few minutes and we're going to let um, Lakeisha is going to jump on and chat with us about health sciences and because we know that some of the people from Dixie County had a big, diff a big interest in the health science programs here at Santa Fe. Um, let's see. Yes. Lakeisha? Yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. So can you see me okay? We can. Okay, so um, I am Lakeisha King, and can I share my screen, um, Michelle? I can share my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I am Lakeisha King, and I'm one of the advisors in health sciences advising. And so I'm going to share my screen here um, just to... Just to give you, um, just to give the students um, some information on how to find um, our information packets for the health sciences. So um, if you're interested in our health sciences and you want to find the information packets because we are virtual right now and um, wanting to look at our health sciences because um, you can talk to us virtually through um, email and Zoom and uh, we'll talk to you and we'll advise you. But if you wanna look at information packets to see what courses are required, to see application days, you know, we advise students to look at our information packets and, and to, you know, look at our website. We have a lot of pictures, just a lot of good information here. So we advise students to, so I'm gonna walk you through how to um, get to our information packets through the Santa Fe website. So right now, I am here at the A to Z index on the website. So you'll see Health Sciences is right here. And um, you'll just click the Health Sciences. And then you'll come to the Santa Fe College uh, Health Sciences webpage. And it'll say welcome. And it'll give you a description of, our, of what we do in Health Sciences. And then you'll want to come right here to this little hyperlink. And it says application, qualification, and selection information. And then you'll click here. And to my understanding, if I'm correct, um, there was some interest in practical nursing and the dental programs, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if and, and I want to make sure you guys can see everything okay, Michelle? Everybody can see this okay? okay. I, I see your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, so... If you go right here to the nursing programs, you'll see practical nursing. And these information packets are so, so useful and so important because they give you information uh, and especially, especially little nuggets of how you can get more points and be more competitive for the program. So you hit on the practical nursing. And so um, it tells you immediately, immediately the application deadline. So we just had one this year it tells you January 31st, and um, it was supposed to start summer A, and so it hasn't started as of yet um, due to COVID-19, but it's going to start in the fall, um, and it tells you what is practical nursing. It gives you information about practical nursing. It gives you the program. It gives you information about the program. It tells you about getting started at Santa Fe College, qualifying for an application, selection criteria, and point systems. So let's, let's start at qualifying for an application. And you'll click here. And just like uh, what Michelle was talking about, it tells you about initially about um, you apply to Santa Fe, um, applicants with college English and math, 
You ensure your transcripts are all here at Santa Fe. It tells you about your having to take the PERT, if you have ACT scores, SAT scores, and it also tells you that you submit your online application no later than 4 p.m. January 31st. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of most what most, what most people wanna know about. They wanna know about what is needed to get into the program. So the selection criteria and point system. Now, practical nursing is a certificate program and so we, it doesn't have, it doesn't necessarily need any courses. So you don't need courses to do, to get into or to apply to the practical nursing program, but it's very, very, it would be very, it would be to the student's benefit to take some of the courses that we have outlined here. And as you see here, we have anatomy one and anatomy two and then we have English, and then we have math. So we have it here to where at the top, it says the B grade or higher. And then it has a little asterisk for, because we have some students who have taken these classes before. And in the sciences, they may have taken it seven years ago. So it says they have to be within a five year period. But pay attention to B grade or higher. It's, it'll be to your benefit to have a B or higher for these to be competitive for the program. So we, we list courses here. You don't have to take all of them, but it'd be to your benefit if you take at least one or two to give you a competitive advantage. And then at the bottom, it tells you for those students who are just coming out of high school, if you take the PERCH or have ACT or SAT scores, if you, if you take any of these in the first time and you make high scores in the beginning, you can also apply, um, but it would be also to your benefit if you have um, English 1101 or intermediate algebra or higher coming in. And then if you come down a little bit, a little bit lower, you'll see where if you have CNA experience um, as well as uh, your CNA certification as well as a few months of work experience, that'll give you some points as well. So we don't require any courses, but we advise students to take some because it will give you a competitive advantage because we have a lot of students interested in the practical nursing program. Are there any questions concerning the practical nursing program? Lakeisha, one of the ones that we got um, in their surveys they did before they joined us today asked about the, the competitiveness of the nursing programs and the health science programs, maybe some of the other ones in general too. Um, mm -hmm. Could you, could you speak a little bit to the, um, the competitive nature of it? How competitive they are is what they're asking. How competitive? Well, it's um, how competitive, and this may not be very, may not help very much in terms of, of answering it. This is very, it's very competitive. Um, we have, we may take up to, say we may take up to 22 students. Sometimes we may have three times that many apply. And so that's why we'll tell students, we advise students, really look at this information packet and really use it to your benefit. Talk to us, you know, email us. You know, if you have questions, you know, if we say, you know, a B or higher, yes, a B or higher is what you will want to achieve to get into this, to, to take these classes. Um, if you, um, if we advise you to look at this information packet, you know, you do want to look at it because a lot of students sometimes get, um, they look at the degree audit and the degree audit sometimes can confuse because initially coming into Santa Fe, um, we want students that are interested in our health sciences to really look at the information packet until they are accepted into our programs and then the degree audit will guide them but the information packet initially is what students want to use as their guide as well as their advisor because the advisor along with this information packet can can lead them and guide them to be to a to be competitive towards applying to the program because you're competing with other students and you're competing with um um, high school students, non-traditional students, stu I mean, you're competing with everyone who wants to be a practical nursing student. So um, you might, if we, and then um, in terms of anatomy and physiology, you want to, um, you want to take the correct anatomy 
you know, the anatomy one, anatomy two, compared to, you know, the 2084. So sometimes we will sit down with you and advise you which course to take. Um, sometimes we'll sit there and we'll advise you in terms of saying, you know, take human nutrition compared to taking, um, and, and rather taking an easy course. Human nutrition is not something to sleep on. It is tough. So some students may not want to take that and compare it to taking something else. That's not as, that's not a heavy weighted course, but that human, but that human nutrition is what's going, is what you're going to want to take to get into that program. So, um, and that's the competitive nature of it because another student will take that human nutrition and, that, and, and make the grade for it. So you want to, and you want to space your classes out in comparison to the application deadline because some students will pile on classes in hopes to um, finish in time to apply to the program, but that's not the best idea because you'll have a too many classes and you'll stress yourself out. And that's where you won't make the grades that you really want to make. Because C's, yes, C's are passing, but C's are not, are not powerful enough to get you those high points to get you into the program of your choice. That's great information, Keisha. Any other questions? If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat box. Okay. Um, I can move on to dental if you like. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's move on to dental. Um, and, and again, dental, all, all of our programs are right up on, are, right, are listed right here. Um, you'll see we have a bachelor's program, the bachelor's for nursing, and then we have LI programs, which includes a lot of the imaging, all of the imaging programs, surgical technology, and then we have other certificate programs as well. But let's talk about dental. You'll see we'll have dental assisting, dental hygiene, and dental hygiene bridge. So dental assisting is another certificate program um, that doesn't have any prerequisites either, but it's the same as practical nursing. There's courses that we suggest students take. Um, so dental assisting are, is what students will, is about a year long program, the same as practical nursing is about a year. Um, students can come into that program and once they leave, there'll be a dental assistant. Um, they can, you know, work for a year. They can either um, work for a year and then come in while they're working. They can take the courses needed for dental hygiene and they can also uh, Take, while they're working for a year, take the courses, or they can also, and they can also bridge to do the dental hygiene bridge program as well. So let's look at dental assisting. So dental assisting um, is a year program. We are current. We are currently in application for dental assisting. The application deadline, as you can see, it says 4 p.m. on June 15, 2020. It opened up March 9th, and this it gives you the web. It gives you the hyperlink of where students can go and apply for the dental assisting um, for the dental assisting program. Um, and it, it, all of the programs have pretty much the same introduction in terms of um, application deadline, when the applications open, and where students can go to apply. Um, and then it has information. If you want to have any more information, you can contact, well, when we were on campus, you could contact us at the number located on the screen. And then it gives you program description and then um, the same information, qualifying for an application, selection criteria and point system. So we can go to the nitty gritty, selection criteria and point system. And as you can see here, it starts off with GPA information. This is what we go by when we score the applications as well. We go by the GPA and grades earned in science, grades earned in general education, I'm sorry. So again, these courses are not required, but we do advise that students take some of them. Now, a lot of times students will take all of them because just like the practical nursing, this program are, is competitive as well. Um, a lot of times students will take, and we advise students to take all of them, 
If you don't want to take all of them, take some of them. Um, I know one of these is public, public speaking. A lot of students don't like to speak in public, so they don't take public speaking. <laughs> but um, a lot of students like psychology, so they do take psychology. But um, if one of these courses that um, you, you do take, please take medical terminology because it is a great course and it helps with anatomy and physiology. They go together. So if, you're gonna, if you take anatomy and physiology, please take medical terminology with it. They work well together. Um, especially if you go into healthcare, they work very well together. Um, you can scroll down and you'll see in terms of point value, if a student applies to dental assisting and they have a bachelor's degree, um, they get five points for having that. If they have an AA degree, they'll get points for that. Full-time dental work, experience. So for dental assisting, um, dental assisting, a person can, um, they can go to dental assisting, apply to a dental assisting program and get, um, they can work for a year and they can get some points or they could have worked as a dental aide and get points as having that kind of experience working as a dental aide, they can get points for that as well. Those have, who have been at a health academy, a graduate of health academy, we give points for that as well. So we give, we give little nuggets for students or little nuggets to help to give additional points because this program is competitive as well. This is great information, Lakeisha. I really appreciate it. Um, is there, are there any last thoughts you'd want to leave? I, I think this is great info. You've given us some great backgrounds and you've empowered the students with some ideas to look into some classes to think about and before applying and some good ideas. Anything else? Um, just really, really, um, I hope I was able to help the students find how to find the information packets on the web, Santa Fe website and to please reach out to us because we are here to help. We're located, we also have a Facebook page that they can reach out to us. I can be found on Facebook. You can hit me up on Facebook. There's two other advisors, Tom Robertson and Kayla Stanley. All three of us are available. We are well, we're here and willing to help. Thanks so much for your time today. You're welcome. We're gonna transfer over now. Um, we're gonna do one student question and then we're gonna have the Institute of Public Safety talk a little bit with us. Um, Camilla, can you hop up for a minute? Yeah. One sec. Hi. Hi, Camilla. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could share a little bit about what it's like to join or start a club at Santa Fe. Okay. So every semester we have a club rush and where you can find any club that you like or that you might be interested in. And if you don't find one, then you can make your own and invite some friends or people that you think that might like it too. And this is a great experience. You can put it in your resume and meet new people. It's a great way to get involved. And I think for me, clubs have made like a great experience in Santa Fe from volunteering to meeting new people or just like having fun. Would you share some of the clubs you've joined or considered either way? Um, I've joined uh, the Civic Engagement Club with great volunteering opportunities. I have joined the Ola Club, which is an Hispanic club, and the Salsa Club, which is a dancing club. In awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate it. I think we're going to move on now. If Tom and Siri and um, if Katie want to hop on, we're ready to turn to the Institute of Public Safety. Okay, we're here. Uh, Michelle, are you our, our hostess? I am your host today. Okay, very good. I'm gonna see if I can do a share screen here. Um, Fantastic. Uh, let me see if I can figure that out. Share screen, go to that, share. Okay, and let me see if there's a way to uh, do this. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, can you see the welcome to the Institute of Public Safety Santa Fe College? We do, thank you. Okay, good deal. 
Uh, I have with me today, I've got Siudi Anderson. Uh, she is our long advising specialist at the Institute of Public Safety. Uh, Katie Murphy joined us recently as an advising specialist. And uh, they're going to assist me today. We're going to flip through some slides. And uh, we're going to talk about who we are, what we do, and how we do it. So uh, here's what we do. Well, we have uh, AS degree programs in emergency medical services and criminal justice technology. That's your two-year degree program. Each of these, by the way, will articulate into a bachelor's degree at Santa Fe College uh, in organization management. So that's a pretty good deal. And uh, of course, you can transfer on to another four-year institution and take most uh, or all of this with you, depending on what, you, uh, what you've done. So, uh, or, or most of it. Um, in the case of criminal justice technology, there are only two courses that won't transfer, but the rest will. Uh, we have training programs. These are certificate programs, vocational certificates programs, and EMT, paramedic, the police academy, and the corrections officer academy. Let's talk about EMS first. And uh, if you go through our EMT program, you can then go through the paramedic program and that will fold into the Associates of Science degree uh, in, in EMS. And I'll break those down for you uh, right now. EMT starts off with one semester. When you finish EMT, you're gonna go through, uh, first you're gonna go through classroom and labs and you're gonna work in a hospital emergency room and on an ambulance. And when you're done with that one semester, it's one semester full time, you're eligible to take a state exam that will get you licensed as an emergency medical technician and you can get a job. Uh, if you'd like to go on from there and become a paramedic, which is more advanced training and a more advanced job, then uh, that will take you one additional year, three full semesters. Again, classroom, lab, hospital, emergency room, and ambulance. It's more advanced than EMT. And I think the easiest uh, way to describe the difference is that an EMT uh, gets basic skills more advanced than first responder or emergency medical responder, but not as advanced as paramedic. Paramedic can actually pierce the skin. They can start an IV and they can give you drugs in the field. Uh, EMTs can't do that. And you can get a higher paying job as a paramedic than you can uh, as an EMT. And we'll talk about the jobs you can get later on. So once you've gone through EMT, your one semester, and then three semesters as a paramedic, you then will only have 19 additional hours of general coursework, and that's your English and social studies and electives and that sort of thing. And then you'll have a two-year degree that you can then fold into a four-year degree if you decide, or just get out there in the workplace. So what are we gonna do with that? Who will hire you? Well, the most obvious choice is fire departments and ambulance companies, but hospitals hire paramedics. Uh, all the hospitals in our area hire paramedics. Uh, doctor's offices, not on the list, but they hire paramedics. In fact, I had a nuclear stress test uh, at a doctor's office about a year ago, and it was conducted by a paramedic. The federal government has all sorts of jobs for paramedics uh, and EMTs and security companies as well. So let's uh, turn our attention to, and what I'll do is I'll get through all of this, and then we'll take questions at the end. I want to make sure we get through all of it first. Uh, now we'll talk about criminal justice and law enforcement. You can get a two-year degree here. You can go through the police academy. We also offer almost all of the in-service training that the agencies get in our area. So if you go to the police academy, it takes about five months and you see, I'm not gonna read them to you, the, the topics that you would expect to go through uh, in a police academy, it's exactly what you would expect. Uh, and it's a lot of fun, it's also a lot of work. It's hard, it's regimented, it's structured, and uh, it's, it's not for everybody. But uh, the career is not for everybody either. So. Now, after you've gone through the police academy, uh, you can take, and CUD, I think we need to put the bridge course information into this presentation as well. Uh, you, can, you can then complete a two-year degree, which is more advanced than the police academy, the five months you got in the police academy, but there's a way that you can get credit for your time in the police academy, actually get up to 24 credits through the bridge course. Uh, but these are the kinds of courses that you'll take in the Associate of Science and Criminal Justice Technology course. And now you're going to go out there and get yourself a job. And obviously, you can become a cop or a sheriff's deputy, uh, work your way up to detective, uh, work your way up to other ranks, uh, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, assistant chief, and so on. Uh, a lot of folks that we graduate go into fish and game and then have to go through a separate academy just for the, the state uh, up in Tallahassee. CSI is a big reason why a lot of our folks go through this probation and parole. Uh, police dispatch, court officers, et cetera. So most folks go through state and local, but many have their eyes on a federal career. In fact, that's what I did. 
I spent 10 years as a cop in Detroit, and then I switched over to the feds and spent 24 years in federal law enforcement. These, as you see listed here, are just some of the careers that you can, uh, you can land uh, if you start out with a criminal justice degree at Santa Fe College and work your way into the feds. You're going to need a bachelor's degree to get into the feds unless you have substantial experience as a police officer. You can combine the two if you don't have a bachelor's degree. So here's our facility. Uh, it's called Main Street. Uh, it's state of the art. It just opened a couple of years ago. Uh, we actually, it's, it's, it's more hands-on than any other, literally any other facility in the state of Florida. And uh, for that matter, it's only similar to four other facilities in the United States in terms of how we've set this up in the technology. The FBI Academy, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, NYPD, and Chicago have similar facilities. Theirs are a bit larger. They've got more money, but they don't match the technology that we have here. Uh, you train the way you're going to perform in the field. It's very hands-on. Uh, that's our townhouse in the upper left. You see it in the upper left corner of the screen, the two-story building. Uh, it's set up just like an actual residence. Medical emergencies, um, go in and get the bad guy, um, arrest warrants, search warrants, you name it, SWAT team exercises. This is our bar, which is in the lower left. In the upper left-hand corner picture, that's the bar from the outside. This is it on the inside. Uh, everything from meet the informant to the bar fight to somebody cut their hand off in the kitchen to a patron had a heart attack, get them on the floor and do CPR. This is our control room. And in the control room, we can introduce all sorts of special effects anywhere in the building or outside of the building for that matter, from sounds to explosions, to smoke, to smells, to video images that appear on the walls to make it as realistic as possible. You actually will feel like you are there uh, when you're performing the exercises that you perform, whether you're an EMT, paramedic, police academy training, or in-service training, uh, it doesn't get any more realistic than the facility that we've got. And we've turned into a statewide model. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement, actually, when we finished it, invited us to make a presentation statewide so we could show the other training academies in Florida what the future of law enforcement training and public safety training, including EMS, is going to look like. So these are just some of the things that you can do. This is how you get there. Our advising specialists are there to help you. Uh, so UD Anderson would be your first point of contact. Uh, we also have Katie Murphy on board. We're gonna update this slide, but if you wanna write down that phone number and that email address, I'll leave this up here during any questions you may have. And um, uh, we're here to help you. So I can't see how many we've got on board here, but we do have a few. And does anybody have any questions that we can answer for you? Oh, we've got a few minutes left. I want to stay on point here on, on time. We have three or four minutes left, Michelle. Any questions from anybody? Just unmute your mic and fire away. I can't think of any. This is Amalia Chester. I'm the counselor at the high school. Thank you so much. This was very helpful. Oh, good. Well, well thank you for, uh, for coordinating. Uh, Amalia, and thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to make this presentation. Um, I see we have some others. I'm not sure if they're Santa Fe folks or if they're your folks, uh, Amalia. Please let us know if we can help you. We are available on the phone, emails, and also Zoom meeting. You guys, um, when students are interested, is it, it's best to go ahead and contact and get started with the conversation. That helps you guys kind of place them right. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. This is such a great presentation. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank well, you. Thank you for coordinating all this. And if, uh, if there are no questions, then you'll be on time for your next presentation, Michelle. <laughs> Fantastic. I think we're going to switch over to, um, we're going to have maybe Madison Cook. You want to come back on and talk with us for a minute? Okay, I'm going to stop my screen share then. Thank there you, Tom. Go. There you go. Do we still have Maddie Cook? Yes. Hi, Maddie. Hi. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about um, maybe choosing a major and how you chose your major or maybe what it's like if you change a major? Uh, okay, so I can tell you all about that. I changed my major 
literally right before Corona. So I got it all switched. I actually, my junior year, took this little quiz online to see what kind of major I would want. And it was for a class, but I'm sure there's a bunch of them. I know CFA actually has that where you can go in. Um, I think it's in the S building. I may be wrong. Yeah, we have the, the career service center here on campus. You can do things like that. Yep. Yep. So it's like a personality thing. I actually ba picked one. I went online to different universities. I went to the University of Florida's page. I was going through just complete different majors. And then I came upon this one called environmental science. And I was like, ooh, I really like this. I'm really into this. But I had no idea anyone who has done it. So I started doing those courses and something happened. So I went and talked, went to the UF at Santa Fe building on campus at Santa Fe. And actually there's advisors that are advisors at UF that knows all about courses. So you can go and talk to them. So I talked to the science advisor at UF and she was there and she told me about all these majors and majors. I told her what I was interested in and she recommended switching my major to wildlife ecology. So then I looked that into that and eventually actually switched my major to that. So those are all very useful things on campus you can use, but also online figuring out. That's great. Thanks. I, um, I thought about how important having the UF folks on campus to guide you in that process too and thinking of them outside of your Santa Fe advisor, you might have an advisor that you talk to for the yeah, UF programs awesome. too. Thanks, Maddie. Thanks. So we're going to switch over now and we have uh, Jeet Salman here with the zoo. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Jane. Nice to see you. Great to see you too. So um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about our zoo animal technology program and a little bit about the zoo itself. And then I did, um, I do have an animal visitor who's going to probably look really, really close to the camera. We can learn a little bit about some of the animals that our students get to work with every day. Um, so we are home to the zoo animal technology program uh, at the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo. So we're located right on Santa Fe College's main campus in Northwest Gainesville. And uh, most people don't realize there's a zoo right on campus. Uh, I've talked to so many students that come to our college that hear gibbons singing and peacocks screaming and they have no idea where it's coming from. But uh, what's really great, if you are a student here at Santa Fe College, you get in free to the zoo during our open hours. So that's a really nice benefit because it, it's basically this forest in the middle of the campus that you can walk through and there's amazing animals all around you. Some locals like alligators and um, we have a walk through Florida aviary and then we do have some endangered species from around the world like Machu's tree kangaroos and Asian small clawed otters so really animals from everywhere and the reason we have so many different types of animals is because we are a program that trains zookeepers so these are people that will go into the field and work with animals in zoos and aquariums we have some in San Diego, many around Florida, Australia, New Zealand. I mean, we really got keepers all over the world that graduate our program and work with animals in many different places. And so it's a two year, it's just short of two years, it's a straight five semester program. When everyone else has Christmas break or summer break, our keepers are here. They work straight through all of that because we're trying to really replicate what it's going to be like when they're a keeper in the field. And animals don't take a break, they don't get a day off, and so someone is here to take care of them always. And so um, that's one thing we always like to make sure people are really aware of, that this is going to feel a lot like a job when you're here. And that's because we don't hire zookeepers, we, you are our zookeepers. And what's kind of funny when I say that, I've always said that, and during, uh, we had kind of a crazy thing happen recently. So we are close to the public due to COVID-19 and um, we still need keepers to care for our animals. And as the college um, restricted student access to the campus, they gave us a loophole that we could hire zookeepers as essential employees here at the zoo. So we do have student zookeepers here that are technically temporary employees getting paid to work here at our zoo, which is a total crazy thing I never thought would happen. But now they get to say that they have paid AZA experience, which is um, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. We are the only zoo on a college campus in the world that is accredited by AZA. So if you think of Disney's Animal Kingdom, San Diego Zoo, Bronx Zoo, we um, have the same standards that we abide by, 
even though we're a tiny little 10 acre zoo. So it's pretty awesome. Um, and our keepers learn everything from working in a commissary to doing fecal exams and behavior observations to learning about breeding and working with animals to train them to participate in their own animal welfare. It's, it's really amazing program with lots of hands-on experience. So um, I highly encourage if you have any interest in working with animals, many people often think directly to vets. Uh, I did when I was a kid, I thought I wanna work with animals, I'm gonna be a doctor for animals. And then I, I realized that through this job, I could have this global impact and um, save species across the globe and make personal connections with people. And I also got to have that one-on-one -on -one care with animals that I was really looking um, to get experience in. So it's a really amazing one-of-a-kind program right here in Gainesville that um, people can sign up for. And you, you, you literally can get a job right out from graduation um, in places all over the world. So it's pretty awesome. Um, if no one has questions right away, I can go ahead and introduce you to one of the amazing animals that our keepers take care of on a daily basis. Um, so one of the things our zookeepers learn to do is to care for animals, but they also learn to teach people about them. That's one thing people don't realize. They assume, now I want to work with animals because maybe I'm, I'm an animal person, not a person person. Um, but that's not really the case anymore. We need people to be voices for our animals. And so we have animals that their special job here at the zoo is just to meet people. And so they're really used to people. We work with them to make sure it's not stressful. And um, they usually have a message that we're trying to teach people and connect them. So um, I'm gonna introduce you to Falcor. <laughs> Hold on here, let me get him cozy. <laughs> he is pretty awesome. So he is a prehensile tailed skink. And I really love this platform because I can get them way closer to you than I could in person. Um, but he is the largest species of skink in the world. So you've probably seen some skinks in your backyard. We get little five line skinks here that they're those dark little lizards that have blue lines on them. Um, so they're related to them. Uh, but these are the largest ones in the world. They're from the Solomon Islands. And they're ones we like to teach people about the pet trade. Uh, they, they did go low in numbers because people thought they would make the coolest pets. But as you can see, I don't even handle him with my hands. He's got incredibly sharp nails. And you can't see them right here, but he's got lots and lots of teeth. And so he would much prefer to hang out on a limb. I, if I do have to handle him, I use um, welding gloves because his, his claws are for walking on trees, not for walking on my delicate skin. So um, they don't make great pets, but it did have um, problems for them in the wild. So um, we, they, this animal is part of a species survival plan in zoos, and they work to help these animals get their numbers back up and to educate people to make responsible pet choices because um, it's a really, really important thing. So that's just one of the many messages we like to teach our guests, and hopefully that makes an impact for the things people do on a daily basis to affect animals in the wild. But I'll show you one really cool thing. One of the ways he gets his name prehensile tail skink is this really cool tail, which is more than half his body or more than the length of his body if you look at it. And they use it, sometimes they get the name monkey tailed skink because they use it like a monkey uses their tail. They can wrap it around things and it helps keep their balance as they move through the trees. So he's really just like the coolest guy ever. <laughs> and I love him so much. He's actually a twin. So he has a twin named Smaug. Um, and these guys give live birth. So his, his mama had a lot of work. Um, cause they are born about the third the size of their parents. So when the mom had her baby, she had two basically mini me's at the same time, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> and then most people don't think about reptiles as good moms, but the mom skinks, they actually help protect them for about six months. So we kept them with her for a while. And then after six months, we started working with them so they could start to be ambassadors. Does anybody have any questions about Falcor or our program here at the zoo? I see one chat thing down here. 
think someone's very excited about Falcor's name. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. I, I, I always loved Never Ending Story growing up, and these guys really do look so much like Drake. They're pretty incredible. I can see it. I can certainly see it. Yeah, and you can see that amazing camouflage they have. I sometimes play a game with the keepers where I put these guys in a tree, and then I have the keepers come and try to count how many there are in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard if you don't know where they are. Oh, oh he's sticking his tongue out. There's a little quick hello there. <laughs> so Jade, if people are interested in joining the program, is it best for them to reach out and learn a little more before they apply or apply right on? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So we do have a, I'm our conservation education curator here at the zoo. So I work directly with the keepers to help them get the skills they need to do public speaking and to talk to our guests about different issues. Um, but we do have a program advisor here at the zoo. Her name is Haley Wilson. She is the kindest person you will ever meet and really, really cares about each student's individual success. And so we always recommend to reach out to her. First things first, we recommend to go to the zoo's website, which you can find right off the Santa Fe College website. And if you go to the zoo animal technology page, it has tons of information there. It has videos, um, talking to our keepers on what their experiences are like. And it has a lot of details about, you know, what kind of credits there are because you're in a cohort, what um, kind of what your two years is going to look like while you're here at the program and what you need to be able to apply. We are a restricted access program, so you would have to apply to the college and to us separately. And we only take students every other semester. So for instance, we're starting a new class in the fall, but we won't start another class until summer 2021. So it's every other semester. So um, I always recommend checking all of that out and then reaching out to Haley. Right now she's doing Zoom meetings because she is, um, Although she's essential to us, she's not considered an essential animal employee right now. So she's spending most of her time working from home, but she is doing Zoom meetings. And then when the zoo opens back up, I highly, highly encourage anyone to schedule a potential student tour where one of our keepers will take you through the zoo and answer all your questions directly from their own experiences. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us today, Jade. Thank you, Falcor. Thank nice you. To meet you. One more boop. Boop. <laughs> oh, that was so cute. Thank Have a you. Good day, everybody. You too. Thanks, Jane. Bye. I think at this time, if you have any other questions from our Dixie County High School folks, I'm happy to answer those. Um, and if not, I think we're going to go do our uh, video tour. Are there any other questions at this time? I don't have any. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll do our video tour and we'll have another opportunity once we wrap that up to see if there's anything else. Let's do a quick share. Looks like that's probably sharing better now. Please let me know in the chat box if you can see it, or if you can't. Let's try that again. Apologize for that. Do we see it? Thank you. Uh, there's no sound. No sound. Hmm. Thanks, guys. Our Breezeway in the Fordyce oh, Student Center, it. you can find a number of valuable resources for students at Santa Fe College. On the first floor, you can stop by the Office of Admissions for a campus tour from one of our student ambassadors, or to meet with an admissions advisor who can answer all of your enrollment questions, including how to prove your Florida residency and earn discounted tuition. The Veterans Military and Success Services is a great stop for information and resources if you're a veteran, active duty military, or a dependent. The Office of the Registrar handles incoming and outgoing college transcripts and houses all of your academic records and information. Sometimes called the Records Office, the Office of the Registrar can help with your appeals, petitions, and your application for graduation. The Office of Financial Aid can help you apply for federal aid with the Free Application for Student Aid, or FAFSA, which is highly recommended, and provide valuable information on budgeting and managing your finances. On the second floor, you'll find the Career Exploration Center, which offers one-on-one -on -one assessments of your interests, personality, and goals so you can find the programs, degree tracks, and careers that are the best fit for you. This resource is open to students, staff, and the community. The Academic Advisement Office. 
If you're planning to transfer and are seeking an associate in arts degree, you want to meet with an academic advisor to create an academic plan, view your degree audit, and discuss class schedules. Just make sure you've submitted your final high school transcripts first. Out of the 28 schools in the state college system, Santa Fe College is one of only five that offers a counseling center. Licensed mental health counselors are available by appointment or for walk-in services. They even have therapy dogs once a week. The administration building houses a general information desk, the office of the president, the cashier's office, and the Santa Fe College Foundation, which offers over a million dollars in scholarships to SF students each year. Walking around our rock cycle garden, you'll get a lesson in history and geology. This unique feature on our campus is dedicated to the memory of former SF professor Gene Klein and features fossilized dinosaur footprints. Open in the summer of 2011, the Jackson N. Sasser Fine Arts Hall is a state-of-the-art facility that is home to our dance and theater programs. Aside from the 600-seat auditorium, the hall includes a dance studio, costume shop, and set and design makeup workshops to support Santa Fe College Fine Arts programs. Many performances are free for students with an SFID. The Lawrence W. Tyree Library is full of fantastic resources for students. After grabbing a snack or your favorite hot beverage from Cafe 101, head to the Learning Commons for free tutoring or academic coaching. You can even reserve private study rooms, work on group projects, or form study groups with classmates. Santa Fe College is home to the oldest and largest police department in the state college system. Our nationally recognized PD is open 24-7, 365 days a year, and it was recently recognized as number two in the nation for providing programs and resources to keep our campus safe. The Kika Silva Pla Planetarium is the only planetarium in North Central Florida and is utilized by many classes for shows and research. The planetarium also puts on shows that are open to the public on Fridays and Saturdays at various times. Santa Fe College has one of only two accredited teaching zoos in the United States. Students studying in the zoo technology program act as the zookeepers and gain hands-on experience with gibbons, ocelots, baby otters, and more. The zoo is also open to the public for a small admission fee and is free for SF students and staff with their SFID. The Charles R. Perry Construction Institute is both a facility and a living textbook for our building construction management, carpentry, electrical, and plumbing programs. Students from these programs come together each year to build a house with Habitat for Humanity. This project provides valuable real work experience to our students while benefiting our communities at the same time. In Building S, you'll find the Student Life and Activities offices with the rec room, a computer lab, student government offices, and the healthcare center. Building S is also where you'll find the Disabilities Resource Center and our International Center with International Student Services and the Study Abroad Office. Our on-campus bookstore is run by Barnes & Noble and is the best place to get your textbooks, school supplies, and Santa Fe gear. The SF Bookstore is in constant communication with your professors to make sure you get the books and resources you need. They sell new and used books, digital, access codes, and rentals, and most items are financial aid approved. This is the heart of Santa Fe. If there's events happening on campus, it's probably in the Oak Grove and you'll definitely want to stop by. A number of festivals and campus events, including Jazz in the Grove concerts and Heritage Showcases will happen here, as well as Club Rush where over 60 clubs and organizations provide information about how you can get involved.